Okay na? Okay, so, assignment of credit. Ayan. So, kapag sinabi natin assignment of credit, okay, the creditor, uh, merong original parties, the creditor and the debtor. Okay? Merong original contract, usually a contract of loan. Okay? Or any other contract that will create credit or a right to collect. Meaning, uh, under Article 1624, sabi niya dito, an assignment of credit and other incorporated rights shall be perfected in accordance with the provisions of Article 1475. When we say it is perfected in accordance with Article 1475, we're saying that it is perfected upon the meeting of the mind of the parties. So, para din siyang contract of sale. So, pag sinabi natin it is perfected upon the meeting of the mind of the parties, it is consensual. Yes? Yes, maraming hindi pa naman yun, no? Consensual. Okay, and also it's made or it is transferred by legal legal cause. Either it is through sale or other modes like uh, donation or transfer or assignment. Okay? And if you compare it with the contract of sale, okay, as to object, sa contract of sale, of course, it's either tangible uh, property, usually personal property or real property. While in an assignment of credit, ang, ang object mo is the credit itself, the right to collect. Okay? As regards to formalities that is best described under the next article, yan, 1625. Okay? Under Article 1625, okay, when an assignment of credit involves a personal property, it must be in a public instrument. So, para natin masabi na ang isang assignment of credit involves a personal property, it means that it is secured by a personal property. Okay, an example of this is when it is secured to a contract of pledge. Okay? Pledge, or you can tell it is a lot. It does in that. Okay? Public instrument meaning it must be executed under all. Okay? Meaning it must be notarized. Okay? Why? Because if this document is executed under oath, question the dati ang kanilang genuineness and due execution. Meaning, you don't need to prove that this document is really the authentic document or if this document was executed freely by both parties. Kasi it's already in a public instrument. You compare this one with a private instrument, of a private instrument, even if you sign it, even if you put witnesses there, you still have to prove the genuineness and due execution of a document. Now, when the when the credit is secured by a real property like a real estate mortgage, okay, it must be in an instrument that is recorded in the registry of property. Okay? It must be recorded in the registry of property. Why? Okay, the purpose of this uh, being recorded in the registry of property is to, uh, to put notice to the public. Okay? Since no buyer, we will notify the public or the whole world that this credit okay, is secured by a certain real property. Okay, what the purpose there is para uh, lahat ng tao maput into notice. Constructive 
itong isang tinatawag na Peter. Meaning, kahit hindi niya alam na yung lupa na yan is naka-mortgage, okay, automatic mag-upot yung tumakasya. Hindi lang ako siya. Kaya nga, asalo, sinasabi natin minsan, uh, or madalas, na nasa mga first year sa law school, we always say, ignorance below, excuses no one from compliance to read. Meaning, kahit pa hindi mo alam yung batas, basta rin yung batas yan, you are covered by the law. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, hindi ko naman alam na may ganyan batas, hindi ako pwedeng maging guilty judge. Imagine if, if pwede yun, di pati ako sabihin mo, na, hindi ko rin alam na may ganyan batas. Hmm. E eh, pumatay ka, nangarayin ka. Eh, hindi ko rin alam yan, di ba? That will be a very convenient defense, di ba? If we allow that. And we don't allow that because of uh, that principle that I have mentioned. But when you are put into constructing your business. You do that sa batas, kapag ang batas na i-publish sa official gazette ng Philippines or na i-publish sa newspaper in general circulation, basta na i-publish yan, Okay, within after uh, ilang days, maging effective na yung batas. Okay, whether nabasa mo yung dyaryo na yun, or hindi, you are put in a constructive notice. Okay, effective dyan. So, kaya siya, uh, dito sa real property, dapat recorded siya in registry of property, uh, purposely to bind, okay, to bind third persons especially the debtor, okay? Sabi ko kanina, in a contract of loan or in a credit transaction, usually there are two parties, the creditor and the debtor. In the assignment of credit command, we have the assignor and the assignee. Okay? Gets ba? Dito sa dalawa na ito, third party ang debtor. Huh? hindi siya kasali sa party. Gets? Si debtor may utang kay creditor. Itong si creditor, ay yung sinta yan natin, no? Any time you will be able. Dapat ipaayos. Meron si creditor at saka si debtor. Okay? Then, uh, sign on it. Okay. This is a separate contract. Ito din, separate contract din. Okay. The creditor and the assignment is the same person. Okay, isang tao na yan. Ayan. Sa assignment of credit, third party si debtor. Okay. Sa original transaction, third party si So, labas, labas si debtor sa kung ano man ang gagamit ni creditor at saka din assignment. Gets? So, pwede i-transfer ni creditor, i-benta ni creditor, yung credit niya, yung receivable niya. Alam niyo yung receivable, di ba? House receivable. Pwede yun yun eh. Di ba? Pwede niyo i-benta yan kay assignment para later on siya na ang magpapulog kay debtor. Or si debtor, siya sa kanya, babayaran niya doon siya kay assignment. Okay, pero there are circumstances na the debtor, okay, is not aware of these transactions. Eh, ang minsan, nagbabayad siya kay creditor. Well, kapag nangyari yan, nagbabayad siya kay creditor, Tinanggap naman ni creditor, higaan naman itong si creditor, di ba? Tinanggap naman ni creditor, ngayon biglang sumitin si assignment. Hindi na pwede. Why? Because the obligation has already extinguished. Uh, previous chapter, di ba? Extinguished na. Why? True payment. Di ba? Extinguished na. Ang, ang dapat habulin ni assignment, si assignment. I think that is in the next Article, yan. The debtor who before having knowledge of the assignment pays his creditor shall be released from the obligation. Take note, 
the important uh, phrase, dapat he has knowledge of the assignment. Therefore, if binayaran niya na hindi siya aware, okay, the obligation is extinguish. Gets? Okay? Ngayon, the important uh, rule here is the notice. Okay? Itong sinasabi natin, knowledge. The debtor must be notified of the transaction. Okay? Ang primary person dapat na mag-notify sa kanya, si creditor. Okay? Kasi sila yung merong original na connection. Okay? Therefore, if hindi yung notify si debtor at nag-bayad si debtor, okay, absurd to siya. So, magiging liable na yun si creditor or si vendor or si assignor si transfer okay gets ba gets gets notice is for the protection of the assignment para makapalit ka siya kay because generally the original contract really is between the creditor and the debtor kita transfer lang sana ni creditor yung contract kay assignment gets ba Dito, gets? Questions? None? Next. The assignment of a credit, of course, it must include all the accessory rights such as guarantee, those that are connected with the credit. Okay, if it's secured by a guarantee, secured by a mortgage, by a pledge, kasama din siya. Okay? Question? None? Let's proceed to Article 16. 1628 talks about warranties of a assignment. Okay? Ano ang mga may nawaran ni assignment? Kapag is okay, ibig sabihin, the assignor uh, will be liable in case of breach of warranty. So, ano yung nawaran niya? The Balance the existence and legality of the credit. That there really exist, okay, a right by the creditor to collect from the debtor. Diba? Mamaya, sisingin siya sa inyo para wala palang nag-i-exist na, na credit, okay? Or, meron man, void naman. Okay, so it's very important that it is existing and that it is Okay, or valid. Okay? The, the signer does not warrant the solvency of the debtor. Okay? Why? The signer cannot guarantee the solvency debtor, di ba? Kasi mismo, pati siya, nagpautang, hindi na naman sure kung may pambayad ng tao. Okay? He does not guarantee, he does not warrant that. Okay? The only time that he warrants the solvency of the debtor is if there is an express stipulation or insolvency was prior to safe end of common marriage. That is the time that the assignment warrants solvency. So if there is no stipulation, he does not warrant solvency. Okay? Questions? And your article 1620. So, kung tapusin na kasi natin lahat para hindi na tayo mapasok sa finals, no? Quiz, quiz na lang. Pasok tayo, quiz, quiz. Ayan na lang, no? Hindi, tsaka mal maliit lang naman din kasi ito. Okay? In those instances, the signer shall be liable for the price received and for all the expenses incurred. Now, if the signer is in bad faith, of course, itong lagi yung tindahan, since nasa civil code ko nga tayo, basta bad faith ang isang tao, liable siya sa bandes. Basta bad faith ang isang tao. 
Kesyo buyer man yan, a seller, basta bad faith siya, liable siya for damages. In this case, if the vendor or the assignment is in bad faith, you shall be liable not only for the price or the expenses, but also for damages. Okay? Okay, next. In case the signer in the page of the leg himself, okay, this is in case when the signer, okay, in the previous article, okay, expressly stipulated that he warrants the solvency of the debtor. Or in the second case, okay, ito yung apply na okay. Okay? And the contracting parties should not have agreed upon the duration of the warranty, okay, it shall last for only one year from the time of the assignment if the period had already expired, okay? So, if there is a period stipulated, okay, ah, this is second paragraph, the period should be payable with a term or period which has taken to the library shall cease one year after the maturity. Okay. Yeah. So if there is no period stipulated, you apply Article 1629? 1629. 1629. But if there is a period stipulated, ask to the warranty only. Guys, hindi ito yung term ng credit card. Hindi ito yung term nito. Okay. Duration lang ito no? Warranty. Dun sa? So dun si no? Debtor. Okay? Kung merong period stipulated, then hindi na masunod kung wala at nag-expire na yung uh, assignment of it, meaning June na yung liability. Okay? One year from assignment. If, it, if hindi pa nag-expire, one year from maturity. Okay? So, under Article 1629, it only speaks of the duration of the warranty of uh, liability with regards to the debtor's solvency. Okay, question? Hala? Okay, 1630. One who sells an inheritance without enumerating the things of which it is composed shall only, un shall only be unsellable for his character as an heir. Of course, we're talking about present inheritance, not future. Sorry. Hindi yung uh, Ito yung kapag namatay na. Yung uh, grandparents, parents, okay, that you are going to inherit something. Okay? Pero kung buhay pa, hindi ito yung mag apply Kasi, uh, future inheritance or transfer of future inheritance is void. Okay? So, in this case, we're talking about present inheritance. He shall only be unsellable for his character as an heir of course kung ano lang yung limit ng share niya yun lang din yung kaya niya i-transfer okay? as an heir of a present inheritance okay questions? none itong mga article na to guys to be, to be honest with you walang case to mga to you can look at the book one sentence lang yung or konti lang yung explanation niya, di ba? Sa amin, sa book namin, uh, if i-share ko sa inyo, yung book namin sa law school, ang nakalagay doon, the article explains itself. Wala na example. Buti sa inyo, meron pa eh, di ba? Dine-discuss ko pa eh, di ba? Yung sa libro namin, the article explains itself. Ganun ang libro, di ba? Tapos ipaparecite sa iyo, anong ibig sabihin niya? Patay ka, di ba? Okay, ganun sa law school. 
the article explains itself. Oh my God, nalaan ko pa. No, the article explains itself pala. Okay. The one who sells for a lump sum the wool of certain rights, rents, or products shall comply by answering for the legitimacy of the whole in general. Okay, so this refers to warranty on the legitimacy of the whole in general. Okay, but he shall not be obliged to warrant each of the various parts of which it may be composed except in case of eviction from the whole or the part of greater value. Meaning, let's say for example, let's use the previous article in case of a present inheritance wherein you inherit the whole property, okay, and you transfer the whole inheritance, okay, you are not obliged to warrant every, every piece of that inheritance, okay? You are only going to warrant the whole in general. Okay, hindi yung buo. Meaning, kapag sinabi mo mo, pwede yung substantial amount for the value. Okay, but not the whole. Ay, but not every parts. Okay? Ayan, meron din, meron din bang explanation dyan sa libro? Wala. Wala, di ba? Oh. Sa amin, wala talaga explanation. <laughs> okay. That's normal, guys. There are a lot of articles or laws that are not really used. Okay. Article 16.32 Should the vendor have profited by some of the fruits or receive anything from the inheritance sold, he shall pay the value thereof if the quantity has not been stipulated. Of course, for any profit received, he must pay to be assigned. Okay? Right? Let's say, for example, Nag-earn na, nag na yung interest dito. Diba? Credit siya. Nag-earn na ng interest. Meron nang na-receive si Asylo. Si Venbor. Sinasabi niya dito. Okay? Meron na siyang na-receive ng interest here. Okay? Ito ay kukulik na po sa kanya yung bond. Okay? Ito, malay mo, ang pag-transfer niya dito is that principal amount of that credit. Wala pa yung interest na nakulik niya. So, in the term, you must pay to the vendor the interest or whatever fruits you may have received from this time from the inheritance. Okay, question? None? None, okay. Article 1633, the vendor shall on his part reimburse the vendor for all that the latter may pay for the debts. Uh, same, same rule, okay? Same rule, okay? Ang pagkakaiba lang, kanina, profit or uh, anything na nangisimbi kayo dito, dito naman, lahat ng nagastos okay, or charges na minayaran ni vendor okay, with regards pa rin sa inheritance or sa estate. Next printing is the before the credits. Hindi. Hindi. Estate, these are the total assets owned by the deceased person. Yung namatay na tao. Estate ang tao ng mga. Hindi estate, estate. Okay. Lahat ng nagastos, daw ni creditor, Doon sa estate, babayaran ni Vendi. Malamang kasi siya na uh, magsusubrogate doon sa rights ni Vendi. Okay? So parang yung principle din kanina, when it, when it comes to profit, na na-receive ni creditor, pwede niyang singilin kay Vendi. Si Vendi naman, lahat ng nagastos si Vendi, babayaran. Either that may be a part of the consideration or not, babayaran ni Vendi. Okay? Unless, of course, there is a contrary stipulation. Okay? Meaning, nag-set sila ng price, ng lump sum price, yan na yung price na babayaran, despite all the expenses incurred by the vendor or the assigner or the vendor, you know. Okay? Gets? Gets. Okay, second to the last. Okay. 
check on the device. When a credit or other incorporeal right in mitigation is sold, the debtor shall have the right to extinguish it by reimbursing the signing for the price the latter paid, therefore, the, judi the judicial costs. incurred by him and the interest on the price from the day on which the same was paid, okay? Meaning, if the credit or the other for or your right is in litigation, meaning uh, there's already a complaint filed in court. Masabi mo, in litigation ng isang credit or ng isang right, if there's already a complaint filed in court. Meron ng kaso, kaso na ito. Hindi lang ito, basta ang nakamalik ka. Meron ng kaso na makafile sa court. The debtor shall have the right to extinguish it by reimbursing the signing for the price. Okay? Pwede niya i-extinguish down yung credit, okay? by the debtor paying the price, number one, to the judicial cost, meaning the cost uh, incurred by the creditor, okay, in instituting the complaint, and the interest on the price from the day in which the same was paid. Okay? A credit or other incorporeal right shall be considered in litigation you know, from the time the complaint concerning the same is answered. So, Nag-lay down pala siya dito ng uh, provision from the time the complaint is answered. So, let me correct my statement. It's not from the time the complaint was filed, but from the time the complaint was answered. Meaning, uh, the complaint was filed in court. Okay? The court sends summons requiring the debtor to answer the complaint from the time he answers it, doon mo masasabi na in litigation. The problem here is, nilagay nila sa kahon. So, hindi siya from the time na nag-file ka ng complaint, hindi rin siya from the time na receive mo yung summons, kundi from the time daw na nag-answer. Okay, let me correct my statement. But generally, Generally, when we talk about uh, properties in litigation, property in litigation siya from the time the complaint is filed. Pero dito nag-stipulate siya under this article na dapat daw from the time it is answered. So not from the time the complaint is filed, not from the time the summons is sent or received, but from the time it is answered. The debtor may exercise his right within 30 days on the date the signing demands payment from him. So, uh, their, uh, their reasoning or their thinking is itong demand na ito is the complete. Ito yung tinatawag natin judicial. Then it is in July. Meaning, from the same way, you can pay. You can, you can pay now within 30 days. Ang pag-answer naman is within 30 days. Okay? So, ayan yung rationale nila. So, this is a way for the debtor to extinguish or to redeem the credit. Bayaran niya na lang yung credit, right? Uh, Asahin. The debtor shall have right to extinguish. Okay, babayaran nyo lang. Okay, but there are exceptions. Okay, these are the exceptions to the previous article. Okay, kung kanina pwede niyang bayaran, dito hindi niya pwede bayaran. Okay, hindi niya pwede bayaran pa na benta yun or na ilipat yun sa co-heir or co-owner of the rights assigned. 
Why? Because it will be, uh, it will become ridiculous later on if mangyayari uh, yun. Just like in this example, in the case of when A, the creditor owes Y and Z, itong Y and Z na ito, they are the creditors who happens to be co-heirs, okay? Ngayon, let's say for example, yung share ni Y is co-heir, is in-transfer din niya kay Z. So same din niya naman. Tapos siya alaw mo na babayaran. Okay, para mawala. E di lugi si Z. Okay? So, ganun yung ating king ni Article 1635. Gets ba? No. Si para may nalito na eh. Gets ba? No. Medyo? A is the debtor. Kita nyo ba? Yan. A is the debtor. Y and Z are the Creditors who are tends to be co-heirs. Okay, so they are separate individuals. They happen to be co-heirs. Okay, meaning they own the credit. Ayo, ito ang share ni Y. Tingnan si Perry na kay Z. Ayo, ang sinasabi natin sa previous article is, pwede ng iredim ni debtor yung debt niya by paying. The whole, the whole amount. Okay, dito kasi hindi na, hindi siya ina-allow under the next article. So, hindi pwede na uh, hindi pwede na i-redeem ni A, nabayaran ni yung obligation ng lipat to Y, Y, Z. Why? Because they are co-heirs or co-owners of the same right. Okay. Diba? When you, when, uh, when co-heirs own a certain property, they have their respective shares. Diba? Itong, itong mga shares na ito yan kasi pwede nilang i-alienate. Pwede nilang meaning, alienate, i-assign, i-transfer, i-benta. Pwede nilang kung anong gusto nilang gawin. Okay? They can do that. In this case, ito yung hindi pwede i-redeem ni Deco. Okay? Kapag binenta ni Y sa mismo co-owner na. Pero kapag binenta niya sa third party na hindi niya co-owner, let's say for example, pwede, pwede yung previous article which is i-extinguish niya. Yung obligation. Okay? Yes? Take note, i-litigation to ah. Hindi yung sa sa other cases. In other cases, the debtor can pay. Okay? But if it's under litigation, okay, uh, meron lang ka. So, you have to respect uh, what is filed in court. Okay? The second exception is uh, when, the, when the assignment or sales are made to a creditor in payment of his credit. Okay? So, in this case, A is the debtor, B is the creditor, And at the same time, in another contract, B is the debtor and C is the creditor. Okay? Kapag daw, itong credit ni B, nilipat niya kay C. Let's go. Nilipat niya kay C, the fact na meron siyang utang. Okay? So parang nag-emerge yung katawahan niya sa isang contract. Parang absuelto na si B. Diba? Parang erase na siya din sa senaryo. Okay? Hindi daw pwede na babayaran ni A direct sa kay C once there is already a litigation or may traso. Yes? Okay? The other one or the last one is C. A is the debtor. B is the creditor. Okay? There is A. Ah... Contract of real estate mortgage where in A sold property to C and B assigned. Okay, this one is with the possessor of the 
debtor, creditor, tapos A solve property to C. Itong si C, okay, siya yung may hawak ng property because it has been sold to him. And B also assigned credit to C, meaning, magigaw ito ito, halit po ah. Si C, meron pa niya kay ICA, meron pa niya kay CA. Property, okay? Pick note at, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag nakakonstitute ng mortgage, let's say for example, may utak pa, tapos ginawa mong security yung lupa mo, dun sa utak, gets nyo, mortgage yun. Hindi ibig sabihin na kapag may mortgage, hindi mo siya pwede i-benta. Pwede mo pwede siya i-benta. In this case, na-benta. Okay? Although merong nakakonstitute na mortgage. Okay? And at the same time, B assigned the mortgage to C. Okay, so it becomes ridiculous if we, we allow the debtor okay, to pay to C. Ikakabenta na lang. Okay, so parang uh, makawalang mong nga ito. Kasi kakabenta niya, ibig sabihin, nagbayad si C sa kanya, tapos babayaran niya. Parang wala din, parang wala din nangyari na contract. Nagka-erase yung dalawang contract. Gets? Gets? Sink, sink in yung muna. Gets ba? Ulitin ko. Ulit? Okay. A. Wala na. A owes B sum of money. Okay. Yan yung credit. Diba? A sold a piece of land to C which was secured by the credit uh, between A and B. So yung foreign na sinasabi ko. Contract of real estate mortgage. Okay? So, Since it has been sold to C, C is now the possessor of the tenement or the piece of land. Gets? Gets. Okay? And at the same time, B assigned his credit, divide the debt or the credit or he assigned his credit to C. Okay? So, he is the owner and the possessor and at the same time, he is the Mortgage, ay mortgage. Okay? Itong si A yung mortgage. Okay, si B yung original na mortgage. Ay mortgage. But because in-assign niya yung credit kay C, C already becomes the mortgage. Imagine C is the mortgage of the land that he owns now. Diba? It becomes ridiculous. Kaya hindi allowed. Okay? Just take note. Allowed ang allowed na i-redeem me debtor ang isang proper ang isang obligation under the previous article the exception is under those three circumstances. Okay? Where, when the assignment or sale is made to a co-heir when it is made to a creditor in payment of his credit or when it's made to a possessor of a tenement or a piece of land which is subject to the right in litigation side. Okay, gets? Gets? Take note, this applies on these two articles. Okay, so dapat yung credit din under litigation. So kung hindi siya under litigation, there's no need for you to consider this article. Gets? Next? Okay. Pwede pa isa. Diba sabi ko? Yes, sir. Ha? Sige. Okay. Ayun. The next is Uh, barter. Ito, mas, mas, mas mabilis lang din ito. 
We've discussed this one actually. Can you still remember the rule on barter? Yes? No? Can you still remember the rule on barter? If, if a certain object What? What do you tell them? Is sold and the consideration is composed of partly in money and partly in object or thing. What is the first rule? You look at the right. intention. Diba? You look at the intention of the parties. If there's no intention, you apply the second rule, you look at the price or the value. Kung mas malaki yung uh, money, it is a sale. Kung mas malaki yung, yung thing, it is a barter. Okay? Same rule applies under barter and exchange. Okay? Sabi niya dito, by the contract of barter exchange, one part, one of the parties by himself to give one thing in consideration to the other parties to give another thing. So basically, this is just an exchange of things. Okay? But take note, we say it is a contract. When we say it's a contract, it must meet the basic elements of a contract. It must have consent, object, and consideration. Okay? In this case, the object is the thing in consideration of another thing. Okay? There must also be consent or the meeting of the minds. Okay? Under barter, it usually requires mutual delivery. Okay? Sabi natin, it's a contract, consensual, it's perfected by meeting of the minds. Pero the usual thing is in delivery niya is usually Kaliwaan. Uh, there's grace with one delivery as you say. So, sabi natin, Article 1468 must be considered. And what is Article 1468? Article 1468 is the rule that I just said to right Okay? Alam nyo na yan. Naharap natin yan, di ba? First, look at the intention. If there's no intention, that's the time you look at the value. Okay. Yes? Questions? None? Okay. Article 1639. If one of the contracting parties have received the thing, promised him in barter, should prove that it did not belong to the person who gave it, he cannot be compelled to deliver that which he offered in exchange but he shall be entitled to that test. Okay? Dito, when there's a case, kasi ang sabi niya, he should prove that. When do you prove? Uh, saan mo ba pinuprove ang mga facts? Hindi naman pwedeng dalawa lang kayo. Ang mangyayari kasi kung dalawa lang kayo, it's your word against my word, di ba? Sabi mo sa'yo, sabi ko hindi. You prove it in court if you want to prove a fact, di ba? Yan. So kapag yan, nasa court, hindi mo siya pwedeng i-compel na i-deliver yung thing. Okay? Since walang consideration dyan, ang consideration dyan is another thing hindi ka compel to deliver. Ang mas maganda dyan is, pwede ka pang maka-recover na language, eh? Okay. Hindi ka na nga pwedeng pilitin na i-deliver yung thing, magbabayad ka pa ng damage. Okay? So that is Article 1639. Article 1640. One who loses by eviction, the king, the saving barter, may recover that which he gave in exchange with the right damages, or he may only demand an indemnity for damages. Okay? So, in case, sticking with the first part, first sentence, in case you lose down the thing that you receive, since barter ito, 
uh, first party, second party. Aliwahan lang naman yan ng team, di ba? Kapag nawala daw yung team na nareceive, ito yung rules. Either you recover that which you gave, plus damages, you recover it, plus damages, or damages. Okay. Yan daw yung remedies na. Whether you are A or you are B. Okay. However, he can only make use of the right to recover the thing which you have delivered while the same remains in the possession of the other party and without prejudice to the rights acquired in good faith in the meantime by a third person. Therefore, ang sinasabi niya, pwede mo lang daw exercise yung first na remedy kung nasa kanya pa yung dami. At hindi pa na acquire na buyer in good faith. Say for example, A, B, C, B, nagipagtalisak pa kay C, who is a buyer, a uh, buyer or an acquirer in good faith, in acquire na rin yung thing na kinuha niya sa'yo. Okay? Ayan? Okay? So kung ganyan na pangyayari, hindi mo na daw pwede exercise yung recovery, hindi mo na pwede ma-recover itong property table because wala na sa kanya and acquired in good faith na lang ibang ka. Okay? In that case, if this is the case, your only remedy is damages or indemnity. Yes? Yes, madali lang, di ba? Okay. Article 1641, I don't need to discuss that. Very easy. All matters not specifically provided, you apply the law of sales. Okay? Let's say, for example, sa rescission. Diba? Rescission is a remedy na mutual. Okay? You can only ask for rescission if you still have the thing. If you can still return the thing. In this case, since both the object and the consideration are both things, okay? Therefore, kung wala na sa'yo or hindi mo na masoli substantially yung gamit, hindi mo na pwede i-consider yung rescission. So lahat ng hindi natin discuss sa barter, sa loan, sa yung small loan, yung loan. In other words, question sa barter. Wala? Well, let's proceed to the bulk sales loan. 30 minutes pa. Itong bulk sales loan, I doubt if meron dyan. Wala dyan. Okay. So, this one you should be said. Kasi wala dyan sa book niya. Okay? Box sales law, on subject to section 1, this act shall be known as the box sales law. From the word itself, box sales, or sales in box. So, bukuhan ang pagbebenta. Hindi siya gaya sa ordinary contract of sale na sahan. So, we're talking about retailers, dealers, okay? wholesalers, who purchase and who sell in a bulk basis. Okay? Section section one, which from section one we can get the purpose of the bulk sales law. The bulk sales law is designed to prevent the defrauding of creditors by the secret sale in bulk of a substance of substantially all of the merchant's stock. I don't know if you were able to discuss in your obligations and contracts. Okay. Uh, the creditors are afforded protection because most of the time the creditors are being the father. In a normal situation, meron kang utang sa kaibigan mo. Yeah. Ngayon, malapit lang mag-deadline. So, expect mo na mag-text na siya, mag-chat na siya, kapag-chat na siya, kapag-chat na siya, kapag-chat na siya. Okay? 
Tapos sasabihin mo, walang wala ako. Diba? Siyempre, si John, teka, wala ka talaga ang pambayan. So, ang ginagawa ng mga debtors, debtors ng creditors, is they would dispose of their assets. They would sell all their assets para walang mahabol si creditors. Yan yung de- defrauding the creditors. Diba? Meron akong utang sa GSIS, meron akong utang, meron akong nilod sa pag-ibig. Wala na akong pambayad. Ibent ako na lang sa iyo, friend. <laughs> Bilig mo na lang ulit kapag may pera na ako. Lahat ng lupa ko, ipangalan ko na sa iyo. Lahat ng gamit ko. That is the frauding the creditors. Okay? And it is discussed in your obligation set for tax. Actually, even before you can sell, pwede, pwede kang habulin ng kredito. Ganun, ganun ka-powerful si kredito. Okay. Kaya ang mutang is hindi dito. Okay. Kapag nagpautang ka, pinautang mo sa kapamilya mo, yan, biro yan. Niloloko mo sa lilin mo. Kapag pinautang mo ang kamag-anak mo. Diba? Kapag singilin ka, mas importante na ba sa iyo ang pera? Kesa sa pamilya? Diba? Kaya once nagpautang ka sa kapatid mo, sa pinsang mo, sa tito mo, sa tita mo, consider that as a loss. Anong tawag niya sa accountancy? That is already what you call a... Eh? Hindi na siya doubtful eh. Yung consider that loss. May tawag kayo dyan. Hindi. It is beyond recovery. Ha? Hindi. Hindi, may tawag ko dyan. Pag ako, no? No. Bad debts. Yeah. Bad debts. Before you declare a debt as bad debt, diba? meron ka munang collection efforts. Diba? After a year, after two years, wala talaga. Saka mo siya ilalagay sa bad debt kasi hindi mo siya makulit. Ganun sa kamag-anak. Automatic bad debt. <laughs> Ang sisihin nyo, kayo, huwag dyan sisihin yung kamag-anak nyo sa pinilit kayo eh, ba? bumigay kayo. Kayo ang sisili mo. Ganun ang ginagawa sa creditors. Okay? Before mag-due yung law, okay, dinidispose na yung lahat ng pwede yung kuli. Why? Kasi ang creditors, kung wala silang makuha sa iyo ng pera, pwede nilang i-go after ang proper business. Kaya ang ginagawa ng iba, wala na silang pera, pinag-benefit mo na nila. Yun yung sinasabi niya dito na secret sale in bulk of substantially all. Since dito, dito guys, hindi normal na vendor. Ha? Hindi yung vendor na ikaw ako hindi. Ang vendor na tinutukoy natin dito, yung sabi ko kanina mga wholesalers, mga retailers, okay? They sell, they sell, they sell in bulk. Okay? So, minsan, they secretly sell all of their stocks and goods. By the time na nalapit ko yung pinagutangan nila, wala na lahat ng stocks ko. Imagine, if yung puhunan mo dun sa stocks mo, inutang mo, di dapat, kung naubos na yung stocks mo, di dapat meron na yung pera. Tama ba? Tama ba? O di ba, umutang ka. Ay, say for example, itong si VM Director, umutang ko kay A. Diba, nag-mensyo sa'yo ng pera. Itong pera na to, pinagbili mo ng goods, yung mga ibibenta mo. Diba? Kapag nagbenta mo ito lahat, ibig sabihin, wala na lahat ng goods mo. Okay, isa lang naman yan, nabenta mo na. Eh, diba? Di ibig sabihin, meron lang pera sa'yo. Dapat pera mo lang magbayar, diba? Ano ang iyayari kasi hindi ganyan? Wala na yung goods. Wala din sila pang bayad kay Kredito. Kaya merong bulk sales. To protect the creditors and at the same time 
to penalize those who violate the boxes law. Okay? What is the scheme under the boxes law? To declare such boxes fraudulent and void as to creditors of the vendor or presumes it fraudulent or void. Meaning, this is, there is a contract of sale for Okay? Between the vendor, take not, pag dito tayo sa box sales, no, ang vendor natin is the merchant, ha? the wholesaler, the retailer. Okay? Meron pa rin vendor, okay? Meron pa rin vendor. The contract of sale between the vendor and the vendor is still valid as to them. Sa inyong dalawa valid. But, with regards to the creditor, that is considered as fraudulent and gets gets the contract of sale is still valid, but with regards to third parties, especially the creditors, the sale is for the lender. For it, sir, ano din naman si mo? Yun sinabi ko, di ba? That's how you explain it. With regards to the passage of title from the vendor to the vendor, the title passes. Okay, but with regards to sale. Concerning the creditors, that is good. Okay? Yet, kaya ang pinapenalize dito yung mga vendors. Okay? The vendors. Since bulk ito, bulk sales yun, you need huge amount of money in order to acquire these goods. Okay? Now you don't have. That's why we engage the creditors. Okay? Unless specified formalities are observed, such as demand and giving this. Ito na discuss at magdalita. Because there are things that you do here that you don't normally do in a normal contract of sale transaction. One of these, okay, sabi ko nga, I don't need to explain this one, this is what sabi ko nga. When we say seller or when we say vendor under this law, ito ang ibig niya sabi ko. With a merchant, traders, dealers, okay, or other person belonging to the same class, okay. When we say creditors, all persons who were creditors of the seller at the time of the sale, although they claims have not been reduced to judgment or were not yet due. As long as you are creditors at the time of the sale, right by the end, you are considered as creditor under this law. Okay? The second one is, although they were not creditor for merchandise, but were merely general creditors of the seller in other transactions. When we talk about the first one, ito yung creditor. Okay, name board. Doon sa pinag-purchase, no? Bulk credits. Okay? Ito naman, ito yung creditors, or yung creditor, yung vendor, in other markets. Diba? Yung mayroon siyang personal, loan, mayroon siyang plan, sa globe, sa smart. Creditor mo sa globe, siya kasi smart. Okay? That's why, importante ang credit rating, ah. Lalo na if meron kayong balak mag-abroad, yun nga. Importante ang pangalan nyo. Huwag kayong maniwala dun sa nagsasabi na ilabas mo lang yung phone, kahit di mo nabayaran, okay na. No, you are blacklisted. And if one creditor goes to Globe or to Smart and inquires about your name and nakita ng blacklisted ka, that will affect your credit score. Okay? Reputation mo yun eh. Ibig sabihin, ikaw, may tendency ka na hindi magbayad. And hindi lang tendency, it's a proven fact. Kasi blacklisted ka nga. 
di ba? Kahit delay sa payment. Ang stricto naman sa delay sa payment is home credit. When you acquire home credit and na-delay ka, kahit isa lang, isang payment lang, mahirapan ka makapag-delay. You will wait, I think, a, port, a, a period, three months or six months, before you will be allowed to uh, to utang again. <laughs> okay? But only those who are creditors at the time of the sale from people of are entitled to the benefits of the statute or the law. When we say statute under this discussion, we refer to the broad sales law. Okay? Creditor whose claims came into existence subsequently the sale are not protected thereby. Therefore, kaya nung sabi natin sa previous paragraph, okay, if you are the creditor, okay, of the bought goods, kasali ka. Or, if you are a creditor, a general creditor, of other other matters, miselle, kasali ka, provided, you are a creditor before or at the time to say. If you are a creditor after, hindi na pwede. Okay, kahit pa uh, nag-offer na din na goods. Okay? Hindi ka na considered as creditor. Okay. So ano yung ginagawa dito na hindi mo ginagawa sa normal contract of sale? Ito yung una. Mahaba kasi yung section B. Ito yung una. You execute a written sworn statement. Okay? A written sworn statement. Ano ang nakalagay sa written sworn statement? Okay? The names and addresses of all creditors. Attorney, paano kung may isang wala? That is a violation of the box system. Kung hindi may ilagay yung name o yung address, that is a violation of the box system. Okay? So ilalagay mo doon yung pangalan, lahat ng pangalan ng address ng lahat ng pinagkautangan mo. Okay? Together with the amount and those that are due and those that will become due to each of said creditors. Okay? Kanino mo yan ibibigay? Yung written form statement na yan. Kanino? Kanino, guy? You deliver that to the family. Ibibigay mo yan kay buyer. Okay? Para aware siya na meron kang utang na tao ka. Okay? Para aware siya. Di ba? Para later on, kapag nagbayad siya, yung bayad na yan, ide-diretso mo kasi yan sa kreditor. Ganun ang bawat sales na. Ide-diretso mo siya sa kreditor. Kapag hindi mo ginawa yun, ay ilagay ito. Meron siya, meron kang punish mo. Ay pinagay ka. Understood? Yes? Oh, we can proceed with the credit transactions tomorrow. No. Three, section, uh, continuation. Right? Ito na yung sabi mo nila. There must be substantial compliance to the statement. Okay? A verbal statement that the seller had no creditors is not sufficient. What do you do? You must execute a statement in writing and under So, public instrument, it's signed Hindi verbal. Dapat ang writing and under If the seller has no creditors, an unequivocal statement of this part is necessary in the statement. Okay? That's why you execute the statement under court. I know the David stating that the stock is sold entirely free from debt and that there is still no rents thereon except a certain chattel mortgage given to a specified person is insufficient as against 
existing creditors to sell it. Why? You need to specify the name, the address, okay, the amount, lahat po ilalagay niyo dun sa written sworn statement. Okay? Take note, this is in connection with the sale of uh, goods in bulk, okay, or your sales in bulk. Ang alam ko is, may ilagay ko yun eh, but parang wala. Hindi, wala, hindi may ilagay. Wait. Hindi ko masin. Okay, we'll continue next week. Pero, ay, is it? Ay, bukas. Attorney A, baka late mag-start yung class natin tomorrow. Why? May rosary po sa field and pinapasta po ang classes na 5 After rosary na lang daw yung classes. Ano yung oras na? Baka mag-buwan or yung... Okay. Kasi meron akong isang slide, nagtataka ako bakit wala. I-define ko sana doon kung ano ang uh, kung ano yung pwede yung considered as sales in bulk or bulk sales. Para alam niyo kung ano yung uh, subject mo or object mo as uh, sale. Paano mo ba ba consider na ang sale is in bulk? Okay? Usually yan, if you sell uh, all or substantially all the goods na, na meron ka or you sell all or substantially all the furnitures na meron ka. Okay. Pero granting na hindi ko maano, let's continue tomorrow 6.30 more or less. More or less. No questions? Bawag si Islo tayo bukas pwedeng mag-proceed ng Credit.